What is it about the ocean that can calm us one moment and then excite us the next? Is it our connection? Is it the sound? Why are we so swayed by its charisma? It comes down to one word, tone. And much like the ocean, a host is the one to set the tone of a show. Comedians, actors, and musicians have all stepped into the role, but much like any art form, there's a craft to hosting. It's time to pull back the curtain and put our host center stage. The lights are up, the mic is hot, it's time to set the tone. Welcome to Set the Tone. I'm your host, Aaron Smalls, and I've had the privilege of hosting hundreds of live events and TV shows across the world. And a couple of questions that I get asked pretty often are, how'd you get this job, or how can I do what you're doing? And well, I never really have an answer for it. So I decided to call some friends who have made a successful career in the industry as host, and we're gonna take a look at their journey and find out how their talent, energy, and charisma shapes events. How does a guy from Australia, the Down Under, accrue over 50 million views on YouTube and become one of the most in-demand hosts on the corporate market? Is it luck? Is it magic? Focus, focus on this episode and you'll find out. Joining me today is an extremely engaging talent with a name so good, you gotta say it twice. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome JJ. <laughs> Is that right, Aaron? Is that what you're going to do these days, man? Is this the future? Is this what's going on? Is this it? This is it. Is this what it's become now? Camry here, Camry here, looking out in Hollywood, you know, visualizing I'm still with about 500 people on stage three nights a week. That's what you got to do, man. We're in a completely different world these days, so it's it's all different. You're not on stages. I'm not on stages. What have you, you been up to? Listen, man, I'm just on camera every day. You know, I need to speak, you know, whether I speak to people and I can touch them or I'm speaking globally to people online, I, that ain't going to stop. You know, if we lose the Wi-Fi, we're all screwed anyway. So all I need is fast Wi-Fi, you know, I need some hair gel and I'm good to go, dude. Those are the hot commodities they, these days. It's like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. if wax or Wi-Fi disappears, yeah. I'm done. It's no longer uh, what kind of car you drive. It's what how fast your Wi-Fi speed is. That's yeah, yeah, what yeah. Well, what's, your, no, it's, it's what's your upload speed? Okay, cool. You can come and hang out with me. <laughs> JJ, man, you, you, you started in magic way back yeah, then. Yeah. And people can, they can look at your YouTube videos. You've got 50 million plus views there uh, for those videos. And people can watch those videos. They can find out how you got into magic and what kind of magic you do. But one of the things that they can't find on there is why you do magic. Why is magic so important to you? Why is it so significant to you? Yeah, man, you know, 2004, you know, when I was about grade, uh, grade 11, I always, I've always loved magic, right? But then someone showed me David Blaine on TV He's doing his first ever Street Magic episode and it just, there's something about connection of people, being able to connect with anyone. Doesn't matter how old they are, where they're from, you know, what language they speak. You know, when you take something in your hand and you make something appear, what, how do you explain that, right? And it breaks, wonder, it creates wonder for people. So it was a great way for me to connect with people all over the world, you know, and it gets people laughing. It breaks every, it breaks the ice really quickly. And it was just my way of connection. How did the magic connection put you onto these stages to start hosting these events? I've always been on stage. I've always done stuff on stage, singing, dancing, you know, performing. But, you know, when you start doing magic at events, people would hire you at events, right? And then what happens is that you would get a chance to do something on stage like, hey, you know, 10 minutes, can you do something for 10 minutes? Our CEO is running late. You're like, cool. And then eventually you start to build this act and you realize, hey, instead of me doing a 10 minute show, I can probably do a half an hour, you know, 30 minute show or a 45 minute show. And then eventually you just start positioning your act and start selling that out and start, you know, entertaining people in multiple countries. Cause that was my idea. Like I wanted to travel to multiple countries and see the world and do what I love. And you've been to how many different countries, how many different places as an estimate have you been to? 32. 32 different countries. Yeah. 32 and, that's just, and that's 
combination of working and playing or is that just all for work? Yeah, it's all work and play. You know, as if you're not going to go to a country for the first time and be like, I'm just going to sit in my hotel and just work on my laptop. Be like, great. You're going to do the event and then the next day you're going to wake up with a beach in front of you or you're going to wake up in a fast city like Tokyo or you're going to wake up and you're smoking shisha in, you know, in uh, Qatar. So it really just depends on where you're at. But you definitely want to experience life, you know, where you get to meet more people, understand culture, you know, understand their point of view as well. I always tell people the more you travel, the less you judge because you get to see the world and see how they think and feel and do yeah that's a great insight there so for people that uh we clearly can't travel this year we are banned from doing that we've been to 32 different countries people are starting to plan their future trips now where's somewhere that they should go or they should definitely see that tokyo, tokyo has this this personality it has this class but culture and it's extremely mysterious and intriguing and safe and you just can get lost in tokyo it's that song by sean mendes lost in japan so it's a hundred percent true you know you can just go down a, a different path and have a ramen at two in the morning from one lady that's been cooking ramen there for her whole life she creates six bowls a day you know and you'll be the lucky person to get the sixth and it's like she only makes enough broth she does that she goes home that's it the whole like seven years there's no other gig she doesn't do what we do and jump around the world she does that that's it you do magic you've been on stages all over the world if you could snap your fingers and have your dream show or host your dream event not what would it be what would the title of the show or the event be it's going to be some kind of game show a lot of energy a lot of life a lot of character, a lot of culture. You know, I want people to go, wow, we can all have fun. and we can. It's just about energy. You know, you walk into a room, yo, this has got energy. And I would love to host that. So something like bring the energy, you know, turn up the energy. Here's the thing, JJ, you're always bringing that energy. We'll call it menergy. <laughs> but JJ, energy and engagement are two different things. What does it mean to engage an audience? You know, I always tell people, like, energy is what gets them. Gets okay, them. okay, hang on. I, this is the thing. Whenever I try to explain verbally what I do as a host, most people are still very confused. It's like trying to watch them figure out the end of a loss. They still yeah. have no idea. So <laughs> I'm actually going to reword that question. Instead of asking you what does it mean to engage an audience, I'm going to ask you to show us how to engage an audience in the next stage of this show called Set the Tone. All right, what's up, everybody? Clap those hands. Come on, everybody. Clap those hands. That's right. I can see all of you in the audience right now. Everyone, do me a favor. Put your hands up in the air. Up in the air. Listen, everybody does it. No one looks stupid. All right, place your hands up in the air. All right, wave them from, from side to side. Everyone say Red Bull. Come on, feel the Red Bull love in the room. All right, do me a favor. Turn the person on your left, everybody. Turn the person on the left and say, I love you. Say that right now so I can see. And I know you haven't said that for about 15 years, but it's all right. You can open up to me. I'm Australian. All right, turn the person on your right. Right, perfect. And say, I think we need to see other people. Hey man, welcome to the few, welcome to reality. All right, everybody, it's great to be here for this brand amazing new event for Red Bull right here in Las Vegas. I'm Jay, I'm your host, I'm Australian. Let's just get that right. It's not English. I know people look at me and then I'm, he's not, I'm not sure if he's Latino, if he's a Ricky Martin ripoff. We don't know, but all that matters is I'm here today to bring the energy and bring you guys together for this amazing event. <laughs> he said a Ricky Martin knockoff. That is. Listen, man, I gotta say whatever I gotta say to break them. What does that mean? You gotta, you gotta break them. Listen, get a, you, first. You gotta remember, people are a group of people are like sheep, right? So people, you're gonna move them. People need to know what to do, when to laugh, how to eat, where to go, right? They're moving. Your your job as the host is to take control of your crowd. The moment that you have control of them and the moment they allow you to go, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. This guy has power. They'll listen. But the moment you lose them, they're all over the place, right? That's why the guy at the front controlling the herd is the, the shepherd. He has the, the power. They listen. Go over here. Do this. And same thing as a host. So when you break them, the first thing you got to do is get them out of state, you know? So I do things like, everybody put your hands up in the air. Everyone does it, no one looks stupid. Rave, rave them to side to side, right? 
Now you might think, well, no, no one's going to do that. Guys, I've, I've made, you know, 70 year old millionaire CEOs do that because everybody does something if everybody else is doing it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's impressive how that works, that it's almost, you say break them. And I I've never used that phrase before, but it, it is similar. It's, it's, we have a matter of seconds or minutes as a stranger mm. to connect and engage with these people like you were doing. You're a host. You're a guy from Australia. These mm. are business people that are in automotive or whatever it is. How are you engaging with these people when you're not even in that industry? The thing is, Aaron, and that's a great question. The thing you have to understand, it's not a corporate event and it's not an accountant. They're people and people want to have fun. And no one will ever say, well, I went to this event. I was the worst time. Why? Because the host made me have fun. So I've proven that over and over again when I've been at events. And they, these are events when sometimes they don't even speak English. You know, I've done a multi, you know, global events with 50 countries in the room. You know, half of them speak English and the other half are very broken English. But if they see someone else do something and they're having a good time, I'll put my hands up in the air too. You know, they just kind of follow along with that. So you're interacting with them. It's almost like an action film. You don't need a lot of words in an action film for it to be fun and, and engaging for you to watch there. Uh, in one of the past episodes, uh, we had Rossi on and Rossi yeah. was saying one of the most important things as a, as a hosting skill is connection. Mm. But I think there's somewhat of a difference there between engaging an audience and connecting with an audience. How would you kind of define the two of those or separate those two? Yeah, it's a fine, it's a fine line, but you know, for me, when I think of the word connection, I think of being, having that really close connect, not close, but like the person feels like you're actually speaking to them, right? Yeah. Where engagement is your, in my world, it's just like bringing everybody together engaging, like making everybody feel a part of something where connection is more like sharing a story of how I didn't have any money coming to this country and I had to make a decision between do I make a, the, had to make the biggest decision of my life, right? And I had to borrow money and I never had that experience before. Now I'm connecting with someone, now I'm talking with them, I'm getting them to relate to a story. So I would feel that's more connection where engagement is like, let's bring it everybody together, what's going on, how are you? Like making feel people feel part of something. How do we engage with audiences virtually? How do we engage with them through the computer, through a device? What is the number one thing that we love hearing? Most people love hearing their own name. 100%. These days now with virtual, everyone knows they have to get, they can't connect like they would on a, in an in-person event. So you're doing things on StreamYard, on Zoom, on Vimeo Pro, on Instagram Live, on Facebook Live. Use people's names, everybody. Hi everybody, my name is Jay. I want everybody right now to use the chat box and write their name and where they're from. What that does is gets everybody interacting, it gets everybody engaging, and now you have that as your ammo, as I call it. Now you have Aaron, now you have Bryce, now you have Tiffany, Susanna. When they hear their name, it's like, oh, they're talking to me. When you get called out on a, on the, on a camera or someone across the screen, there's something magical. Even if they can say 100 people's names, you feel special. Yeah, and that's a big part of what this show is, is it's not fully just about host it's about anyone that is going to step onto a stage or use a microphone because it's one of the phrases that i have i don't need a stage to make magic but it helps and so that's these are the skills uh in everyday situations to be better at just talking i gotta thank you for introducing that very pertinent hosting skill engagement and i'm sure people want to know a lot more about you so we're going to take a quick little break. We're going to show a clip of you, and we're going to come back and find out a little bit more about JJ. Go energy, excitement, engagement. I mean, you're pretty much just a into greatness. Three that's, what, that's what you are. 
the <laughs> greatness. Listen, we're going to get you out of your head and we're just going to get you to the next level, all right? And we're getting to the next level of you, JJ. I'm calling you JJ, but that, that's got to be a, it's a stage name. It's What's your actual name for these people? Joshua. Joshua. Some girl said to me, I'm going to call you Joshua. I said, I'm not going to answer you. Only my mom has allowed that. I give her permission because whoever I've come from, she allowed to call me the name. Even my dad calls me Jay. My grandma calls me Jay. My brother calls me Jay. That's so funny. And, and so you're from Australia. Where in Australia are you from? I'm from Queensland in Brisbane. And then, you know, I moved to Sydney and... Then I, you know, said no more Australia. We got to, we got to go global. We got to go global. So you ended up in LA. <laughs> well, we ended up in a few countries before that, but we ended up in America in 2017. And like a lot of people, the snake of the city, she ate me like an anaconda. I didn't know what I wanted. You know, she just went, oh, you know. And like you say, the city can pull you in all these different directions. So yeah. how did you get pulled in the direction of hosting? I think, you know, what happens, I always tell this to, to people I coach in life, like you need to try a lot of things, people. A lot of people are trying to find that perfect clarity. Like I don't have my clarity for my life. You're not meant to. Like you're meant to try different things and, and realize what you don't like and what you do like. So with hosting, there's something magical about being in front of a crowd and bringing everybody together. It's exciting and it's, and it's eager. It's, 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 it's attractive. It is. It's a dopamine hit to me. It's a powerful thing what we're able to do. And there's such an energy to that, but there's also such a responsibility. And yeah. I love that you use the word dopamine because that's, that's exactly what it is. It is a drug, not only for us, but for them, it's this rush of energy. And when there is that dopamine, there's that energy that is that excitement, they don't forget what you're saying. They don't forget the content. They kind of stick with you along mm. uh, for the ride. So how would you define yourself as a host? Someone that's playful, that brings a life into people, you know, that can bring anybody together, that can really take any topic and make it fun. Nice. Right, so that's how you define yourself as a host. But how would you define the word host? What is a host? Is someone that takes an audience and moves them to a better place. You're moving this audience to a better place. Who are some of the companies or clients uh, that you've worked for in the past? A Virgin, McDonald's, Hilton, BMW, Red Bull, you know, you name them, I've done it. Audi, you know, a lot of, in, a lot of different countries. I don't say those logos or those companies to show off because the one thing I realized about them, at the end of the day, they're just a bunch of people in one room doing usually the same thing and wanting to have a good experience for the night. And you you mentioned a lot of these big companies, these almost, I'm pretty sure they're all Fortune 500 companies that you've listed. Why do they trust you to get up on the stage and do this job? Why do they trust you to do this instead of just hiring Bob, Dylan, or Steve? Well, why do they trust a professional and then why they trust me are two different things. Obviously, they, they, they don't want to use someone internal in their company because as a company like that, they know that, hey, they need to get a professional, right? You don't get a plumber to come over and entertain your children for your children's birthday because that's not what he does. So you would think a company hires professionals. Why they get me is because I'm the best. But why they get me really is because they, they get someone that they can – see, hey, who are the, which other companies has he worked with? So obviously if I work with other companies in their own kind of network, you know, oh, if they've worked, if he's worked for Audi, he can also probably work for us who's BMW because he understands. And they need to see visual examples as well and client testimonials and that, that you can pull, that you can be fun and engaging and professional as well. Because you have to remember as well, it is a, another event for you. It's their number one event for the year. Do you find that hosting for corporate clients on corporate stages is different from your, when you're hosting for TV or for other events? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Because corporate, you're, there, is a, there is a finesse about it. You know, you just can't come out and you know, start being truly what you want to do. It's not, you're not getting paid to be you. You're getting paid for a service to help them. 
So there is a way to keep it engaging and fun, but you can't be disrespectful and you can't cross the line because it will. There isn't the line is extremely pulled if you say something that's going to trigger something. So corporate, yeah, you can. It's a little bit more controlled, but then when you're hosting a television show, you can play a little bit more. You can be a little bit more relaxed, but then you're also going to be worried about a few things. You got to worry, be worried about angles. You can't go on. You know, if you've got a minute, you're doing 58 seconds and then quickly wrapping it up. Corporate, ah, uh, five minutes, seven minutes. They're not going to care too much. Yeah, it's great. And you have a lot of, a lot of your your website has a lot of photos and videos and testimonials, and we've got to we've got to jump into it. Your social media has been crazy over the last three months. Your social media has grown exponentially. You started around 5,000 followers, and I think uh, as of right before this video, you're approaching 100,000 followers. Social influence is a big thing now with agents, with with markets and, and, and these marketing teams. How has that impacted you, that social influence? How has that impacted you with your hosting? Yeah, well, look, perfect example. When I was, you know, I did my first, I booked my first ever big international gig in India. This is in 2015. And at the time, I had about 30 million views on YouTube as a magician. And I remember when I finished doing the event, after the client, I said to the client over lunch, I said, hey, why did you choose me? Right? And I thought they were going to say, because you're talented, you look Indian, we wanted a younger host. No, it wasn't anything of that. Not even like a smidgen. They said, we booked you because that you had the big following on YouTube. And at the time, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand because, you know, fame and influence and those numbers. And now I understand that being in America, I understand how important having that number is. Because when you have social influence, you're immediately thought as liked. You're liked more, you're trusted more, and people want to buy from you. Perfect example, Kylie, you know, Kylie, uh, Kylie Jenner. She's getting $1.2 million a post on Instagram. That's crazy. Is she the most attractive? Million. No. Is she the most talented? No. It's because she's from the Kardashian family. And because they know that you've got influence. They've got those numbers. And people immediately put her on the pedestal of she must know more. We'll give her money. So when you understand the psychology behind that, it can be very powerful. I've just learned how to leverage that now that you want to have high numbers. But where I try to teach people when I coach them, get influence, but also have character. Because having influence, having numbers, is like having a pretty house in Beverly Hills. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. There's 16 pools and you walk in and there's no furniture. There's nothing on the inside. And that's what a lot of people have online. Beautiful faces, beautiful bodies, beautiful on the outside. Then you open up the door, no character, no soul, no nothing. So if you can at least have both. You and I'll you call that the talent, the furniture, everything that's inside the house is the talent. talent. And what you're, seeing on the, what you're seeing on the outside is that social influence. The social numbers is a social influence, right? So, and I, the mistake I made is like, I get it. So many people out there watching right now are focusing so much on their content and they're extremely good artists. People in New York I know, like I used to date this artist and she was amazing, but no one, she was a ghost. No one saw her. So I was like, you got to build those numbers because you're already, t you have, you could be the next, like you are, not you can be, you are right now. We put you on Jimmy Kimmel, you're it, I can see it. So it's like, you've got to learn, how can I build those numbers? How can I get that, that social influence up? Because people do judge people, they're basing it off that. And yeah, JJ, man, you're doing a great job of that yourself with your coaching program and how you're really helping people and, and folks should really look into that. And we've talked a lot about you and we've reflected on your journey as a host. But right now, I want to test your knowledge even more about the entertainment industry in regard to hosting in a trivia challenge I like to call, Are You Sure? Here's how it works. I'm going to ask you a industry-related trivia question about the hosting industry. Once you give your answer, you'll lock it in by saying the words, I'm sure. Once you've done that, we will find out if you are correct or if you are incorrect. So I need to know, are you ready to play? Are you sure? Come on, man. I've been ready before this show started. Let's do it. No, see, you have to say your answer and then I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Your question is, 
The original host of Let's Make a Deal was Monty Hall. Who is the current host of Let's Make a Deal? Wayne Brady. You said that with the quickness. Come on, man. I know my Waynes. I know my Let's Make Dude, that show is fire. He says who it is. He says it's fire. He's got to say it the right way. So I'm going to ask you. I'll ask you one more time. Sorry. Who is the current host of Let's Make a Deal? Wayne Brady, I'm sure. Wayne Brady, yes, that is correct. Well done, JJ. All right, man, you, you knew that answer way too quickly. So I'm just going to pass you the mic and let you play Are You Sure with me. All right, Aaron, from a host to a host, I know we know uh, one of our favorite hosts, Steve Harvey, correct? But the question about Steve Harvey is not how many host shows he's hosted. When was Steve Harvey born? When was Steve Harvey born? Man, that is... That is a personal question about Mr. Harvey. What year was he born? Don't have to worry about the month or the day. I think he's in his 60s, I believe. Correct. So how, what my did dad, he... My dad is 1957. I'm going to make him a little older than my dad. So I'm going to say Steve Harvey was born in 1953, I'm sure. Ladies and gentlemen, incorrect. Oh, come on. The answer is 1957. 1957. Oh, so he's the same age as my dad. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think the real question here, the follow-up question is, when was Steve Harvey's mustache born? That's the real question. But there we go, man, JJ. That is Are You Sure? A little bit of a trivia challenge there to find out more about our hosting industry. And as we move towards the close of the show... I have just 10 final questions that I want to ask you. As I mentioned, JJ, I have 10 final questions that I want to ask you here. As I ask you these questions, just give me whatever the first response or the first phrase is that kind of comes to mind. So here we go. Your first question is, what's one word that describes what you do? Energy. What's a phrase or a sound that describes what people think you do? Energy. <laughs> What do you most look forward to about an event? Being on stage and having the audience in the palm of my hand. What do you least look forward to about an event? When people start to drink too much and you lose them. What's the most rewarding part about what you do? The feeling of everyone coming together and experiencing a moment at an event. If you couldn't do what you do, what else would you attempt to do? A direct or create art, create something. What profession would you never want to do? Cleaning toilets. How will you know you made it? When the audience leaves an event, smiling, laughing, and walking out with that kind of, that was a great night. That's a perfect event for me. 25 years from now, what do you want people to remember about you as a talent? That I always brought the energy to a room, that I always brought the life to any situation, and that I always brought people together. Final question here for you is, I am a host because blank, or I host because blank? I host because I love people and bringing people together. That's a great answer for the final one there. We've put the spotlight on you throughout the show and we're going to continue to do that right now as we move into the end of the show. I'm just going to throw it to you to do the soft close. Hey, what's up? It's JJ here. Now, once again, guys, doesn't matter whether you want to be a host or whether you want to be an entertainer or whether you just want to do more in life. Get out of here. Take action. Once again, Follow me on Instagram at JJLive, at J-A-Y-J-A-Y-L-R-V-E. Make sure you follow Set the Tone on IG and also follow their YouTube. Subscribe. They're going to give you great tips, strategies, and techniques so that you can be the best host in your life. And, guys, I'm JJ. Thanks for watching Set the Tone. Well, there you have it, a truly unique personality. I'm excited to share another guest journey with you on our next episode as we learn more about the craft of hosting. I'm your host, Aaron Smalls, and we'll see you next time when the lights are up, the mic is hot, and we set the tone.